We're now heading south of Banyaluka, the town, but we're in the Principality of Banyaluka as well, which I've just discovered this morning, they're one and the same, except the Principality is a hell of a lot bigger. But we're going down the canyon now, rocks on the right, with icicles, big icicles. And then on the left, a whacking grey, nearest damn it, cliff face. Look at that in front there. Now this is biker country. This is what you want to come over here for. This is what you want to see. Putting your knee down round the bends and disappearing down into the river, which is just down there on the left. I actually hope you don't. That was just a flippant comment. But I know some of you are mad and probably try it anyhow. But there's the light at the end of the tunnel, look. That's what we're all searching for. You've heard of the north face of the Eiger? Well, there's the north face of something I haven't got a clue what it's called, but it's pretty impressive. You may well have seen on one of my tours, especially North Wales, when I'm heading down towards Snowdonia and heading towards Llanberis, that we go down a valley. There is absolutely nothing like this valley anywhere in England. Well, maybe down Cheddar Gorge, but let's forget about that. As we travel further on, there's a, an old outpost that used to police everything back in the day. But wait till you see the view that we've just left. As we reach the top, we're gonna to have a look down. We're going to approximately 900 meters above sea level. Luckily, we'll still be able to breathe. But with a little bit of luck, we're gonna get some amazing views. Got out of the car now, we're having a little walk. Now in the center of Banyaluka yesterday, unbeknown to me, when I walked across the road, there was a policeman was coming after me to find me 40 marks for walking across the road. Let's hope he doesn't come here. But that's where we come up from. And up there, can you see the top of that mountain over there? That just looks a little bit like Mount Etna. Or at least it did to me earlier today. So we're gonna show you the most amazing view in a minute. And here on the side of the road, look, Bosnian icicles. Look at the size of those beauties. Now that's what you call an icicle. Now, are you ready? No, I mean, are you really ready? Look at that. Look at that. How absolutely bloody stunning is that? That's why you come on your bike to the Banyaluka district. That's why we got out the car and why we walked back down again. There are houses that you can see right in the distance. I don't know if you can pick them up on this camera, but as we scan around, there's Mount Etna, or at least that's what I'm calling it from now on. Snow right on the tops, just like you would see on Mount Kilimanjaro. Even better, because that has snow on the top in the center of Africa. Isn't that just breathtaking? We enter the Tunnel of Doom. Oh, it's not that big. And it's a while since I've heard that. No, shut up. We're not talking about that. So we come out of the tunnel. There's icicles on the inside of the tunnel. We're pretty cool, isn't it? And we're still in the ravine. Look how picturesque that is. Guys, if you don't get here on your bike, and I know, okay, okay. I'm not on my bike, because I'll be freezing me bits off. But this, in the summer, must be spectacular. Tunnel number two. There we are, all out again. Isn't this just a stunning ravine that we're going through? It's never ending. On quite a spectacular day here in the end of November, 2013. And tunnel number three. Woohoo! This dingly dangly thing in the middle here, this is to protect Tamara from being killed in the car. Say hello, little dingly dangly thing. Hello, little dingly dangly thing. 
and now we've got an ostrich farm. Now I'm being told it's an ostrich farm and all I can see is a river. Now I know ostriches yeah. have got big legs. Oh, here's an ostrich farm. Projector ostrich. And there's another sign a little bit further down. Not that one that says parking, but that one there that has an ostrich with its head in the sand. Oh, ah, well. So a little bit, I suppose, in England we're trying to breed ostriches for the meat and it's all nicey-nicey. There's a real one! Look! Look! It's a Bosnian ostrich! Let me take the window down. Hello, Mr. Ostrich. Dobra? Yeah. Dobra dan. Dobra dan. Dear Yaitse. This way? Da. Okay, thank you. Da. Where is it? Oh, there's his pals. Bye, Mr. Ostrid. Got a flag coming up on the left, which is there, and this is the end of... The Serb part of Bosnia, this part of Bosnia. The Serb part of Bosnia, or the part that we've just been through. We're now moving into the... Federation of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Federation of Bosnia-Herzegovina. And we get greeted by pigeons. You see, the best that's get everywhere, don't they? We're coming up to a part in the ravine which... I saw these little posty things. Can you see them just ahead of us there, in the rock? And believe it or not, we're now coming into a region that provides hydro-electricity. They don't put tarmac on the roads, but they provide hydro-electricity. Look at that there. And I heard a story, I heard a story yesterday, or perhaps even the day before, where there was an area, I don't know whether it was around here or a little bit further away, where they dug into the side of the hills and made it into an airport for the military. Now that's what you call clever. You try and bomb that bastard. But back there, there's a dam. Or should I say, over here it's called a dike. Ha <laughs> Yeah, well we all know what that means. Guess what's coming? Guess what's coming? It's number seven, and lucky seven, it might be the last one. I have a funny feeling it might not be, but we'll find out. But the dam, or dike here, which is formed by the river over there, builds up behind a set of dam walls. Not, not walls which are bloody dam walls, but the walls of the dam. And once it gets to a certain level, they release it. And that's how they make the hydroelectricity. Now I find that, really impressive that they've manufactured a dam to maximize the water in the river to build it up and then release it and create electricity why the bloody hell haven't we got something like that in our country or maybe we have answers on an email and just for everybody we're now coming to another tunnel tunnel number how many how many eight. it's tunnel number eight Followed rapidly by tunnel number nine. Way! It's the Tuk Tuks. It's the his name is Tuk. It's Tuk, Bosnian Serbian for tunnel. Yes. This is Tuk number nine, and it looks rather modern. This one, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> that took everybody by surprise. The bend in that road. Did you feel Tamara break? <laughs> yeah, so did I. Concentrate on the driving. <laughs> Look at it. I mean, it's just... It really is a spectacular route, this. You see those big holes, boys and girls? That is the power station tunnels. So what happens there, then? Do they let water out of there? No, that's where they work. That's where the power generators are. And, and all the electricity distribution. It's been built into the side of the mountain, so nobody can damage it in a war. So if you didn't hear that, we have tunnels built into the side of the mountain, which generates the hydroelectricity, or they are, they are the... There's the road that goes into it, in that little bridge. There's the, there's the uh, tunnel entrance that goes into the mountain, and manufactured that way, so that in the periods of war, it can't be damaged again. What fantastic thoughts they have in this part of the world. We don't do anything like that with us. Get a grip, government. Build a few bloody hydroelectricity stations in the mountains. And I know you're listening because you follow the Motorbike TV podcast. And here we are. 
Uh, and that's not a church that I thought it was. It's somewhere else. What's that then? Church. Oh, I'll shut up. It is a church. Exactly. And there's a man pointing to the top of a mountain. And because of the cross, that must be Mr. Church person. Over there we have... We've come into the village of Yaitse, which... I pronounced at the beginning, Jaxi. And if you see how it's written, I guess you'll understand why. But you can see the village there. And as we pan across quite nicely, we come up to the Ottoman fortress, which was occupied by Turks. And Turks used to run this country for 500 years. And there are still remnants of it there. And as we look down a little bit further, perhaps in fact you can even see the city walls. This is one of the reasons that we've been brought here. You can hear the roar of the waterfall. In fact, you may even still be able to pick up the look of a rainbow in the mist that cascades up as the waterfall hits the bottom. And this is on the edge of Yaitse. You've also got the fast flowing river just down below. So let's take from the river and go up to the village of Yaitse.